<laughs> hey, what is going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you all if you have a hard modded Xbox 360, something real quick, but something quite useful for anybody who might be messing with plugins now or in the future. This is going to be how you can bypass your plugins on boot on the Xbox 360. Now, this is important because there might be some people out there who they are using plugins, they want to use plugins on Dash Launch for things such as game mods or even if they're using a stealth server of some kind. However, there could be times where you are using a plugin that is either outdated or you're using a plugin that is incompatible with your dashboard version. And whenever loading up that plugin, it causes issues. Most commonly, you could see issues such as the console freezing at the Xbox 360 splash screen, so it does not boot up into the dashboard. Or when you're trying to boot up a game which requires that plugin to be loaded, the game might freeze up your system, just things like that. So what we can do is bypass that and then work on fixing it later on. This will just be real quick, but it will require your Xbox 360 right here, as well as a USB flash drive on hand. So with that, let's go ahead and move over to our PC. Now you should be familiar with how to set up a USB drive for your Xbox 360, but in case you're not, you will need it set to MBR and FAT32. We can do that all on the PC here using a program such as Rufus. Just find the link for this down below in the description and download the latest portable executable. Once you have the executable downloaded, you can double click this, say yes to this. You can allow it to check for updates if you wish, and it should look a little something like this right here. Now keep in mind, I have a 16 gigabyte flash drive plugged in, and when we do this, it is going to erase all data from the drive, so be sure you back up any data that you care about. Now with that, we can select non-bootable for our boot selection, make sure MBR has been selected, and make sure FAT32 is selected. Everything else we can keep as default. We can now click on start, and as long as you're ready to wipe all the data off this, click continue or OK. And after a few seconds, it should be done formatting. And there we go. Once it's done, we can click on close. Now go over and look for your drive. As you can see, mine is drive letter J, and we can right click this, check the properties, and we can see that it is formatted to FAT32. Now all we need to do is make a blank file on here. You're going to want to open up the drive. From here on the root of the USB drive, right click, click on new, and create a new text document. We're going to rename the entire text document to launch dot i n i and hit enter it should bring up a message like this saying we're going to change the file name extension say yes and we don't have to put anything in there we just need a blank launch i n i file to double check that we've done this all fine if you're using windows you can check the view go to show and make sure file name extensions is enabled with that that is all we need a blank launch i n i file so with that now go back we can right click eject our USB drive and take it over to the console. Once your console has turned off, unplug any other USB devices from the system and then plug in your USB drive with the blank launch.ini file. Then turn on the console from the power button. Your system should boot up a little something like this. And if you have an LED indicator on the flash drive, you should see that it will read some files at the beginning. So as you can see right here, we should get a little something like this, where it will still sign into a profile if you have anything set by default. However, it will kick us to the regular Xbox 360 dashboard because we have completely bypassed the dash launch plugins. So at this point, we now need to fix up our issue. Now, I don't have any rogue plugins here, but I'll just show as an example. What you would need to do is go over to your game section. Hopefully you have something such as XEX menu already set up right here as a backup and you want to load this up. So now I'm going to navigate to my hard drive itself, go to HDD1 and I know under apps and dash launch, I have the dash launch executable here. So I'm going to launch this. And at this point now you need to go to your paths and check and see what is set here by default or what is set elsewhere. You can go into plugins. This is mainly where it's going to be. So as you can see, all of my plugins here and all of yours should be set to none because there is nothing set up at this point. However, do keep in mind that if you have a bad plugin, you will have to remove that or even update that. So for example, here in my paths, I know the only one I had set was my default plugin, which you can hit A and then look for the plugin itself. So mine would be in HDD. It would be in apps, Aurora, 
and aurora.xex. So for example, if I knew that my Aurora XEX was outdated or bad, I would have to just go through the process of getting this updated here on the system itself, like delete this out, re-download it, download the latest version, put it onto a USB drive and transfer it over here. However, since I know this one is good, I'm going to hit A and that should set it now. And if there's any other plugins you want to set, you can do that as well too, just with this same process. And then in order to save this, we'll now need to press the RB button, go down to HDD and hit the X button in order to save the launch.ini. So that's going to be our new launch.ini file. At this point, you can now turn off your system and unplug the USB flash drive from it. Once that process has been completed, go ahead, turn your console back on and it should bring us to the boot animation itself. But after a few seconds, it should launch our default plugin here, which is going to bring me to Aurora. And at that point, hopefully you should be able to continue on. So if you have any other rogue plugins that you need to either remove or delete or what have you on there, you can now do that after the fact, and then you can check and see which ones are good, which ones are bad. However, that is how you can get your system back to a working state and get to kind of a troubleshooting step for the plugins itself. Hopefully this video helped you all out, and if it did, a like would absolutely be appreciated. If you didn't like it, a dislike is fine as well too. Anyways, this is Mr. Mario, signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone.